Let's start the coaching mastermind, everyone. Or my coaches are on mute. Well, no. <laughs> but Deb was off of mute. I thought Deb was going to start it up. I did too. And then she quickly went to mute. <laughs> Well, hey, I go ahead, Dan. What were you gonna say? Nothing. Like, listen, like, you know, where this is how we roll, right? Yeah. We, somebody starts, somebody, you know, you, you know, we had a, a mastermind meeting before this that that consisted of an email and a text to plan for today. <laughs> However, because we're so entrenched in um in real estate and markets. Um, I just want to remind everyone that this is a normal market, right? Stop running around with your head cut off. This is actually three quarters of the time markets agents need to lead generate. So in a balanced market or in a down market or a transitioning market, agents need to lead generate. The only actually in a tra uh, transitioning up market agents still need to lead generate. The only time they don't need to is the market that we just got out of. And by the way, that was very short. Was it what, two years maybe where we didn't really need to pick up the phone? So 80% of the time, this is normal. This is what real estate agents do. We just all get, we just all get complacent when the market shifts and everybody's caught unawares. Everybody's like, it's different. It is different, but it's not hard. It's not difficult. We know exactly what we need to do. And today we're going to talk about um, our favorite topic, which is prospecting. And, and we're actually going to talk a little bit about how marketing is not prospecting, right? Um, when we are farming, awesome, need to do that. But it's not prospecting because prospecting is one-to-one -one communication. And that's really what we're going to focus on. Curtis? Uh, awesome. You're right. And listen, good morning. You know, happy March 17th, where today everybody's a little bit of Irish somewhere in there, right? I get it. Um, it's all good. It's just like on Mardi Gras. Everybody's a little bit Latino that day. So anyway, let's get going. Um, you know, big topic. It came up and I thought it's important. I, you know, I'm talking to a lot of agents, Deb, myself, Claire. DJ Tom and, you know, agents as well as mortgage loan professionals. And this is where it came up. Um, seen a lot of people struggling over the past couple of months, seen a lot of people that maybe aren't necessarily hitting their goals. They're off track, that kind of thing. And they're like, oh God, I don't know what to do. Here's the deal. You do know what to do. You do know what to do. And then I went back because oftentimes people, here's what's interesting. I'll share a real quick story. So I was talking to a mortgage loan officer. I coach a bunch of mortgage loan officers. I was at their sales meeting yesterday and one of them goes, one of them, uh, he went from basically zero in December and January to like February, March. He's got like $4 million in his pipeline, right? That he's going to close for March. And then he's got like another three in the books for like April. So I asked him, I said, what happened? And he wasn't listening to me. And he went and hired an additional coach, go figure, like two coaches. We both said the same thing and he listened to him and got into action. And we said exactly the same thing, which was we mapped out a plan for him to do a little bit of lead generation every single day. He implemented that strategy and went from zero to hero in about 30 days, maybe 60. And it was all just lead gen. And it was just mapped out for him. It wasn't hard. It wasn't five hours a day. It wasn't any of that stuff. And so it just got me to thinking. And then, you know, I've been relying upon and Deb and, and Claire and myself, we've been talking about this book, Selling in a Crisis. And, you know, I pulled this out. I love this guy, Jeb Blount. And this is what he says about when we sell in a crisis. Because, see, we're worried and we're thinking about all these different things. And yet we just need to gain a little bit of focus. And this is what he says in chapter 15. He says, become a relentless, fanatical prospector. Before the crisis struck, people called you. Leads poured in, opportunity was abundant. So much so that your pipeline was almost on autopilot. Those days are over. Nobody's going to call you now. If you want to talk with people, you've got to interrupt them. 
You want to protect your income and your career? Then you must become a relentless, unstoppable, fanatical prospector who is obsessive about keeping your pipeline full of qualified prospects. Don't wait until your pipeline is empty and you're desperate to make a sale or save your job. Begin right now. In a crisis, prospecting must become the air you breathe. Don't whine like a baby about not having enough leads or cry at the coffee machine with all the losers about how, one, how no one is buying. Get moving, take responsibility, and generate your own leads and your own luck. The brutal truth is the number one reason for failure in sales in any economy is an empty pipeline. And the root cause of an empty pipeline is the failure to consistently prospect every single day. Now, I could go on and on and on, but you guys get the gist. You get the gist. And so I ask, and, and really it's not a question that I'm looking for an answer, but for you to pause and think about what's keeping us from doing this a little bit every single day, from keeping our pipelines as full as we need them to be in order for us to hit our goals. Some people are doing it, others may not be, or maybe we're a little bit stuck, I'm not really sure. But what can we do? And that's when we'll open it up. Deb, let's talk about this for a minute, but then let's open it up. I'd love ideas from them because some of us may benefit from other ideas from others that, you know, what are they doing to maintain that consistency so that they can keep that pipeline full? Because the reality is, we might think we have two buyers and yet two buyers not enough in this type of market. We need like 30 to get like two closed. We need 15 sellers we're talking to to get two closed. You guys get the gist, right? So anyway, Deb. I just think it's, it's so let's break it down to where we see um, agent struggle, right? And the first thing is, you know, and you hear me say this all the time, I talk about uh, an agent should have a three-legged stool and a three-legged stool is three ways, primary ways that you're going to find business. And so when I talk to an agent and they're like, I, I don't have business and I don't, and I'm struggling. The first thing I ask them is, what are your primary lead sources? Because I think we get stuck when we don't have the pathway, you know, who are we calling? What are we going to say? And how many people do we want to talk to today, right? So the, it, it, the the breakdown can happen anywhere in that process. If we're not, Chris, let's back up a step further. Why are we doing this? The question, if I was an agent that was actively building my business, the question I would ask myself every day is, do I want a job or do I want to figure this out? Do I want a job or do I want to figure this out? Because that's what agents who haven't had a closing in several months. That's the question. Do I want a job? And I, that isn't meant to be pejorative. I ask myself that every day. Do I want a job or do I want to make this work, right? To motivate me to take action. And then the next question is, where am I getting my lead sources? Because I'll I talked to an agent the other day and they're like, ah, yeah, the business has really changed. The market's really changed. And I'm like, where do you get your business from? And here was the answer. Well, well, doesn't well means I'm not crystal clear on my sources that I can. And that's where the first breakdown. Well, I get I get some from social media and I get some from people I know. And well, I got some from open houses. And the first thing I asked them to do is let's narrow that down to three. Pick three, laser focused, and then over the next year, promise yourself you're only going to practice and get better at those three. So if there's a class that's outside, if there's a class on door knocking and you don't door knock, don't take it, right? So number one, get focused on your three areas. And the reason it's three is because a three-legged right. stool will not fall over. Now, once you've mastered the three-legged stool, you can add four. I'm not saying only three, but I'm saying get three and get good at the three, right? So three, that's the first. Hold on one second. So Deb's got a dog about yay big, who's noisy as all get up every time we get on Zoom. 
So if you're wondering what she's doing, she's probably beating her dog. Well, not beating her dog, but at least disciplining her dog. Yeah, there you go. She loves to let me know that there's someone in the next state moving around. By, by the way, funny story, no sidebar, and then you can get back into it. Just so you guys know, Debbie and I went to a, a build convention last year. You guys have all heard of it, whatever. It's like in September or whatever. So we fly out to Dallas, and she and I are sitting on the airplane together. And she goes, guess what we're doing? I said, what? She goes, we're picking up a dog. I said, wait a minute. I thought we were going to a sales convention. She says, we are. But I'm getting my dog. And I was like, we flew to Texas to get a dog. And we did. So we attended a sales convention, brought a dog home. I don't know. Yeah. Kind of fun. Yeah. I thought if I told him beforehand, he'd be annoyed or pissed or didn't want, you know, he would be protesty. So I decided to wait to tell him. I point. would call that purposeful, though. <laughs> that was a purposeful trip. Well, here's what happened. We I've been looking for a dog since the pandemic, a specific kind. And when we were booked the convention, I said, what's the chance that there's going to be a dog? that's going to be the right age, the right kind, where we're going to be, right? Impossible. No way. Well, not true. There happened to be a dog that was the right age, that was the right kind, that was going to be, that was going to be ready to go home then. So yes, I didn't even check to see if the hotel was dog friendly. So this is what's so purposeful about that, which falls right into what we're talking about. I <laughs> prospected for that dog and been intentional and had that in play, then that reward and the results would not have been there because that's due to your actions. Yeah. Well done, coach. Thanks. She's cute. Uh, can you create a downline and sell dog homes? Um, that'd be awesome. Create a downline and sell dog homes. Perfect. Um, the three-legged stool is the first part. So if you're not clear on who you're going to call, that's going to be the bottleneck for you taking action. Then the second thing, or who you're going to communicate with, the second thing is what you're going to say, right? So once you have, and by the way, the three lead sources you should choose is the three best places you got business in the, in the top of the market. So wherever you got the most amount of business, even if it was 90% here, 5% here, 5% here, those are the three, right? So those are the three. Then the next thing I hear is, and by the way, all the way up to $50 million producers, I'll know what to say. I'll know what to say. What do I say to my sphere of influence? How do I get good at that conversation? What do I say if I cold call? How do I good, get good at that conversation? How do I get good at purposefully texting or Facebook messaging my friends and family and sphere of influence on Facebook daily. Like my system, I'm going to message 10 people a day privately on Facebook every day about real estate because that's going to be my system for getting more business. If you're running ads on social media, it's a little bit sketchy because that kind of falls into the marketing area. But if you're going to do that, uh, what are you going to say? If you're going to target for sale by owners, how do you get good at that conversation? If you're going to door knock, how do you get good at that conversation? So each of these steps has a bottle, bottleneck, meaning if you don't know what your three-legged stool is, you're probably, you're probably randomly having conversations every day. If you don't know what to say to each of these markets, then you're stuck in how to have that conversation. And then if you don't know who you're going to target, right? Great lead generators have their target list printed out or already identified before they sit down at their desk every day, or they open their CRM and look at what the tasks are for the day. And they're calling those people and following up those people. If you do open houses, Got to know what to say. And I don't mean what to say. Hi, welcome to my open house. I mean what to say to get contact information from every single person that walks through there. And then what to say the next day when you call them all, even though you just saw them, and what to say then, and then how to nurture them 
and keep them in your pipeline. In other words, how to use a CRM to make sure that you're following up with everyone that you meet, right? So then there's a tool. Well, I'm having conversations and I'm finding people, but I'm really bad at follow-up. That's the fourth step that we find people get stuck because they're not using a CRM purposefully. And I know CRMs have bells and whistles. Here's what I want you to do. Whoever you talk to today, put in the CRM and set a task reminder follow-up conversation. Everyone you talk to tomorrow, put in the CRM, set up task follow-up reminder. Always a task follow-up reminder conversation. And if you do that, you can backfill your emails and fancy newsletters and all that other kind of stuff. So it's those four things. So it's it's having a target list like a three-legged stool. It's um, getting good at those conversations, right? Only those conversations. And then having a system for who I'm going to call today and then who I'm going to follow up with. And number five is accountability. How many people are you going to call and who are you going to be accountable to and tell them that this is how many people you call? Find a peer. I loved what... Um, what was his name? Jeff, who is the guy that came on, Curtis, that said this was talking about the system that you invited from? Uh, well, we had Dan, we had Don, and we had Rob. Don Yoakum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Don Yoakum said, find accountability, find a partner who is a little bit ahead of you. I would argue you could find a partner that's as committed as you are to making lead gen calls every day and then be accountable. My goal is five, my goal is 10, and then check in with that person and we'll get better. Todd, I see you got your patiently have your hand raised there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes, Deb, uh, one thing, one thing you said like weeks ago that really struck me hard and I still have it written down somewhere is don't get caught up with the shiny stuff out there. Um, what was I going with this? I get frustrated and I know one thing that I suck at is my sphere of influence. Uh, but when you start to get on track, don't get frustrated because I sent out a message to my sphere of influence, got to about 40 of my friends, and then I got put, put in messenger jail and was unable <laughs> to contact anymore. So I just went another route with that. That's that's a different story. But the long game, the long game, I, I uh, finally came up against the long game, calling people, my analytics for expired, so like 50 to one, I'll call 50 people before I get one conversation. That sucks, but I'm still in there. For sale by owner, it's a little bit different, about 25 to one. I get text messages back now from people saying, why are you calling me? Quit calling me. So I will call them up. I'll start the conversation and get the ball rolling that way. We'll go, we'll banter back and forth sometimes for two or three days until they give me some sort of answer. The long game is I go door knocking. I don't know if you guys can see this door knocking. This is one of my main business cards right here. Door knocked yesterday. Gal took the card. She looks at the card. She says, I've seen this dog before. I have that same picture up in my yard telling people I'm your neighborhood realtor. She says, I have seen that card. She said, I'm going to hang on to this card. I said, fantastic. Thank you so much. It pays off. Stay with it. Don't give up. The long game is there. The short game is there for myself. It's the long game. It can suck a little bit, but that's okay. Thanks, I Todd. love that. I love that. You know, your numbers, man, you know, yeah. we're business people. Um, I coach, you know, business owners and they don't know their numbers. Like how many customers does it take to get a sale? What's the lifetime value of the customer, but great business people know their numbers. And it's not a judgment thing. It's not a like, looks. it's 50, com 50 dials to get one person on the phone. It sucks. If you have a dialer, it's easier because you can still work while the phone's dialing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it, you're not just sitting there watching it scroll and scroll. You're doing something else while until somebody picks up. Um, but we know our numbers. And that comes down also to you need a goal to, to how many people you're going to talk to every day. 
And and we've talked on quite a few calls, Curtis, about um, in your daily, and I know Liz and Lizette both do this, you know, how many people do you come across to every day when you're going to the grocery store, when you're going, now, that's a cold conversation. When you walk into a store, do you say there's a buyer or seller in here? Um, I wonder if I'm going to be able to find it before I leave the store. Now, I don't mean you go and you hunt everybody down to have the conversation, but you, you know, if you're standing next to someone, do you know what what is your cold open? Mm -hmm. And, I, uh, you know, I think a great cold open is, hey, are you local or are you visiting? That's a great cold open to anybody that you happen to be standing next to in a line. Now, you might not be able to finish that conversation. The line might go on. But are you like I almost get like this. I don't even sell real estate. And I get like this when I walk into a store because I still lead generate for business because it's just fun. It's like, it's like I'm sneaking into the store. I'm going to go see if I can find a buyer and seller in here. Maybe I can. And to me, it's deliciously enjoyable to be on the hunt and to look like, can I find some business? Um, and when you take that approach, that it's a game, like when you wake up, do you say, where am I going to find my buyer or seller today? I'm going to find one. I'm going to find one today. And then everywhere you go, you're like, there, there? Is it there? Is it there? Like, where is it? I don't know. It's just a fun thing. Lizette, I see your hand up. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was going to mention, um, my my husband recently got a motorcycle. And I told him this. I always, I'm always prime, by the way. I'm always, like, pushing him. He has his license, but I'm always pushing to see if he's motivated by something. But I'm putting it out there, always sharing with others. So there's a lot of things, believe it or not. I, I went to ride with him with his dad's group and I met an investor from Puerto Rico. This guy is a millionaire. And I talked about real estate and, and I wasn't as intentional, but what I mean is when you start getting into these small groups and knowing the people, a lot of people that these, they have these hobbies, they have to have money to have these hobbies. I mean, the boat hobbies, whatever hobby, a lot of these hobbies. So what I mean is a lot of these people already have, not all of them, but some of them have their things set and they need real estate agents too. So whatever you're into, I don't know if it's cricket. I don't know, whatever it is, sewing, find the club that you like, <clears throat> get in there, start talking to people and you'd be surprised. Is what I'm saying. Like, you know, there's, I'm still waiting to see a real estate motorcycle club. There probably is one, but you know, I'm wondering, you know, there's a lot of ways to go about all this. Well, and the beauty is, is when, uh, what I love about that, Lizette, is, is when you join a group and you get to know the people in the group, the average person knows 10 people a year that's going to buy or sell. And if you're casual in your relationships and conversation, you don't earn the right to get that referral. But when you're in a group and you're purposefully related to that group, not only can you help them buy or sell, they start to tell you that when their friends are buying and selling, because you have a relationship, right? So you've now earned not only their business, but the right to get referred into their network. And now you're getting, it's not just about you buying and selling, it's about them knowing someone that they can refer you to, right? So that deeper relationship earns you the right to get into their sphere of influence. So I love that. Love that. Hey, David. Hey. So uh, on that note about talking to people, I've been having, well, up until recently, I've been having a real issue with like, how do I start a conversation uh, without just coming off as salesy? You know, like, uh, what do I even talk about? And I've found what works is I'll ask somebody a question, like I'll ask for help uh, because I heard somewhere that if, you know, people like to help other people. So I'll say, hey, do you know a place where I can get like a, a juice around here? I'm kind of thirsty. I'm looking for like a fruit juice or maybe I'll, I'll go with boba or something like that. And if they're like, I'm not from around here, boom. And if they're like, yeah, there's a place right down the street, then either way, it, it starts a conversation about, oh, you're local. And then we can kind of go in that direction. Or if they don't know, then I can find out they're not from here and then we can go in that direction. So just a little ideas for stuff to talk about 
if anybody else is like me and didn't questions, know where to go. <laughs> questions are the magic sauce. Questions, you know, you know, hey, I'm a real estate professional and I find that all my friends and family are asking me about real estate. Did you have any questions about real estate I could help you with? Because I'm committed to just helping people by answering questions about real estate, right? And I love that. Here's the point about that. This is an, a magical group. There's 55 people on this call. If you're struggling with your three-legged stool and what to say, reach out to someone on this call that you know is already <clears throat> mastering that leg, right? So if you struggle with your sphere of influence, go find someone who's good at their sphere of influence and talk to them and ask them how they have the, right, get good. Your job is to get good at those things and you don't have to be good at it today. You can get good by reaching out to a peer that might already be good. Do, you know, are there masters in all the legs of the stool? Absolutely. Or are there at least people that have figured out how to have the conversation? Just get committed to getting good at that conversation and recognize that in the beginning, it will feel awkward, but only for about 30 days. Only about 30 days. If you're doing it consistently around 30 days, you'll be, it'll be easy for you. It really will. Hey, coach, how you doing? Jamal. Hey, what's up? What's up? Hey, I just like one quick tidbit. Just want to add to that whole cold call or cold conversation. Whatever happened to, I think it's really simple. Whatever happened to, hey, how are you doing today? And smile. Start there. Watch body language. Because when you do that, if they don't respond back, then you know that's probably not the conversation you need to have. And then go from there. But I rest my case. Love it. Listen, we're not looking to convince anyone to work with us. We're looking for the hand raisers. We're looking at the people, not that hang up on us, not that say, don't call me anymore. Not, we're not, look, we're looking for the people that when we say, can you help? Can I help you? They say, yes. We're not talking anybody into working with us. We're just turning over the rocks to say, can I help you? Can I help you? Can I help you? Can I help you? And wait until somebody goes, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah. Let's open the floor, Curtis, to questions, challenges, limitations. Yeah, and and Deb, I'm glad you brought that up. And, and I do want to, I'm glad, because I hate when just you and I are talking. And so I had two thoughts. Um, one is I'd love to help those that might be struggling with the system. And we'll have Claire come on here, because I know she's doing some great things with the group coaching. And I'd love to hear what that system sounds like. That was number one. But before we get into that, you know, you talked about numbers a few moments ago, and here's the deal, guys. This is why, you know, we're so passionate about this topic, and this is why we wanted to talk about this and get on here today and help you is because I'll tell you some numbers. Here's some numbers. There's 1.6 million real estate agents, and 25% are going to be out in the next three, six months. That's number one. Number two, I don't know about your market. I can only see my market. I go into the MLS, I study our numbers every single day. We are down 25% over last year, year over year. This month, this time, year to date, last year, we're down 25% in sales. Well, what's that mean? It sounds like a lot. I don't know, whatever. I'll give you the skinny on it. Here's how many real estate agents are in my market. 8,500. There's 8,500 real estate agents in our market. I'm in Sarasota, Florida, about an hour south of Tampa, if you don't know. 2,000 houses were sold last month. Let's assume, let's assume that there was a, uh, an agent on each side of the transaction. That's 4,000, right? 2,000 sales, agent on each side of the transaction, buy, sell, that's 4,000 people. That means 4,500 real estate agents did not sell a house last month in my market. And again, I don't know about your market, but here's the deal, guys. So all of that aside, we are in a fight for leads. Business is down. And you've got to talk to, I don't know how many people in order to meet your goals, but we are in a fight for leads. There are less people purchasing property right now than there was this time last year and even the year before. And we know that. We are in a fight for leads. And if you are not lead generating right this second, you need to start today. 
and you need to stay after it and stay after it and stay after it. And I promise that if you do that, you will be fine. You will be fine. You'll have closings. You'll meet your goals. You'll do all the things. But we need to do that. We need to start right this very second. So anyway, sorry about that. I just was getting a little sideways here. Thinking and about oh, by the way, Curtis, we also know that 80, um, 20% of the agents are doing 80% of the business. So that 4,500 is not one agent on each side and a different one. 20% of the agents got 80% of that business. So it is a way bigger number. You know, it's probably 75% of the agents in this market did not have a closing. And here's the thing about Sarasota, which many of you in Florida are like this. This is snowbird season. We close more transactions January, February in March per month than any other month of the year. This is our peak buying and selling market. So that 2000 number is artificially inflated because it's season. In June, might only be 1000, might only be 1200 because this is our prime buying season with our most amount of closings. Um, however, this isn't a scare tactic. No. Nope. This is a action tactic. If, right by the way, if I was actively selling real estate right now, I'd be like this. This market is the best market for agents that want to make calls and talk to people because 75% of them aren't doing it. And the people that you talk to right now that are in an agent's database that isn't making calls hops out of their database into your database, and then you keep them forever. So the people that you gather in this market become married to you, and they leave the 75% of agents that didn't make the calls, they leave their databases, and they come into yours, and then they stay. So if you want to pick up market share, um, businesses are grown in down markets, because no matter what business it is, the 50% of the people in that market, that business aren't doing the actions that cause their business to grow and sustain. I am so excited about this market because the agents that are willing to take, by the way, imperfect action, mediocre action, better action than you did before, five calls a day, but every day, no matter what, will really, A, stay in the business, and then B, as the market improves, they'll have built this amazing skill and they'll start catapulting. Like the, the calls you make today that get you one closing, the, call, the same calls you make next year will get you two. And the year after that will get you three because all these other people are in your pipeline and now they're reaching back out to you and they're saying, come list my home because you did a good job of communicating with them. This is a very exciting market for a real estate agent that wants to take mediocre action and get good at the system of communicating with people every day looking for business. Now's the time. And I would be like, this, it, like if I was building real estate, I love it. Get all the mediocre agents out of the business and allow those of us that are ready, by the way, not to go get business, to go serve more people. We're passionate on here about saying, go get business. It's not that. Is who can I help? Who can I help? Who can I help? Who can I help? And the more you can help people, the more you will catapult your business that when the market does turn, which could be 18 to 24 months before it starts on an upswing, we probably won't be here that long. You will then catapult into higher and higher transactions, numbers of transactions. Hey, Liz. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just, I really kind of wanted to talk about the accountability part of it and just really focusing and knowing your numbers. Um, I think for the past two years, like you said, we were able just to put a sign in the yard, you know, and sell the house, have multiple offers and everything like that. But really and truly knowing your numbers is so important that I know if I need to have 
six, you know, I know I need to have at least 60 conversations so that I can turn that into four closings a month. You know what I mean? So I know my numbers very, very well, but I got to that because I hired a coach. So, you know, I have that accountability side on that, you know, because, and I have that clarity because I have a coach. So I'm not saying coaches are a freaking expense, you know, that they're cheap because it's not, but I got somebody to help me stay accountable. Just like, so my, and the conversations will look just like this. If you hire a, a, a one-on-one coach, did you make your numbers last week? No. Okay. You know, some coaches will be like, all right, bye. You can hit your numbers. You need to go peace. Or, okay, now that you didn't hit your numbers this week, what do we need to do this week now to adjust to make sure that you're hitting your numbers and hitting your goals? So whether you hire a personal coach or you do the group coaching or or an accountability partner, make sure you find somebody that's going to help you attain your goals and, you know, and exceed your goals so that you can, you can excel in this shifted market. Also, guys, we have to work four times harder. We have to talk to four times the amount of people in order to hit the same results that we did last year. So make sure that you know that, like, I know if I want to double my transactions, I got to talk to twice, you know, probably three times the amount of people per week so that I can just maintain. Now, if I want to double it, I'm going to have to triple that. So just know your numbers very, very well. I honestly, I'm a big I'm a big fan of coaching. Um, I think everybody needs a coach. It just depends on what level you are, what you can afford, but it's an investment in your business. These people are there to help us get in a, you know, to, to meet and exceed our goals. So I'm just, I'm all for coaching. Thank you, Coach Debbie, Coach Curtis, Coach Claire, Tom. I know your tiny Tom is in here right now. Um, So I just have to say thank you because without these calls, without my coach, I don't know if I would be on track to where I, where I want to be this year. So thank you. Awesome. Was that? I always mute because in my house, you don't know, one of my kids starts running in there at school, but you never know. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share also, like I've had agents come and then you you set them up, you ask them to do the checklist and they're like, oh, but why do all these trains? I just want you to touch a little bit on that because so, so let's other people hear why they want to jump into production and I get it. But, you know, I don't want to train too many trainings, like where's the action and realizing that in this market, skill set is key. Right now, I have about five, six pending buyers. Like I'm talking about showing property. I have people. So guess what? If I don't know how to have those conversations, all right, let's sit down and talk about the market. All right. What's going to happen if you have to go back to rent? If you don't have those type of conversations, well, they're just going to sit there and they're not going to buy. And then that, you know. I just want you to touch a little bit on that as far as like people not wanting to train and they're not wanting to go on the calls or do any type of purposeful training. Just. Yeah. You know, so good. You said that it's so funny. You said that. So many of you guys were in grit and, you know, here's one of our most memorable moments in grit. Deb and I put together a seller needs analysis and a buyer needs analysis. We had people in grit that were anywhere from brand spanking new to, you know, 20 some odd years in the business. And what was fascinating is we role played the um, seller needs analysis and buyer needs analysis. And everyone acted like they had never heard it before in their life and that it was the best thing in the world. And those that have then taken that and gone and implemented that in their business, like you, Lizette, like you, Liz, are having success moving people forward because now you've learned this process of asking the right questions and helping people make decisions that's what it was all about and so if many of you guys that are on the phone call if you weren't in grit or you don't know what we're talking about go find out make a phone call call somebody go whatever but you talked about skills based market that is a skill how to properly have a buyer needs analysis or a seller's needs analysis to assist them in making decisions and moving forward um, is a skill, is a skill. And here's what you'll figure out. When you get good at that, you'll either help them move forward or you'll decide that they don't fit in your pipeline right this very second and you won't spend time with them. It's the difference between showing somebody 15 houses and five. Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. And it's not a new thing. We didn't come up with it. It's been around forever, but that is a skill. And so, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, please call someone. I call someone and ask them. 
um, hey, what was Curtis talking about? What were they talking about? Buyer needs analysis, seller needs analysis. Because that is part of the skill that you need to have going forward, or at least in this market, so that you are spending the time in the right places and so on and so forth. But anyway, I don't know if that helped, Lizette. Is that what you were oh, talking yeah. about? Oh, yeah. And I think like I hear it all the time. I hear agents of my group. Oh, I went this. And I, and I, the question that I ask is like golden. And they're like, and then they stay quiet. Did you do a buyer consult? Right on. Right on. Liz, do you still have your hand up? And I was going to, that's what I wanted to bring up, Lizette, right? Is because we were so fat. We were so in these past two years, we were so just used to taking people out because we had to show them 20, 30 homes because they were getting beat out after, after offer after offer, offer, excuse me, I can't say offer right now. They were just getting continuously beat out where now we, we have the time to really sit down with our buyers because we do have inventory guys, we're spring market is here. So yes, we are starting to see multiple offers again and things like that. Interest rates, Honestly, interest rates isn't even in a topic of conversation anymore because if you need a house, you need a house. Like that's just what it is. But we have the time to sit down and really get to know our people. Like I was at an open house on on Sunday and I had two people from Virginia where Virginia in the house, where's, where's Tiffany. Um, and they were like, we were having a conversation about the market and they're like, they're both, mind you, I just met these people at an open house and they're both raving about me to each other. Like, oh my God, do you hear her? She knows what she's talking about. We need to call her. Wow. Because of just the, how we were having the conversation, just being able to explain the market, knowing the area, you know, sharpening our skill set. We're in an ever-changing market, guys. We can, we don't know everything, but we need to make it a point to at least say, okay, what's happening today? What did, were there any changes? Like I'm looking at some EXP internal changes right now that I'm just like, oh, I don't know how I feel about that, but I need to know it. So just making sure that we continue to sharpen our skills, guys, because guess what? When you sound like the expert, I just put three people under contract this weekend from people that I met this past week from that open house. Three people went under contract this week. So when you know what you're doing, I'm telling you, you are going to outshine everyone else. So know, know your craft, know it well, and be able to speak on it. It's kind of what it is, guys. Oh, Liz, and the other thing too, like I tell people, I don't know if you've had this conversation with agents and I'm like, there's no business. I, listen, where do we live in East Orlando? Liz, you and I know, we know agents from our previous offices, even here in East Orlando, like, we can pull up their production. Let's pick five agents, just, just, just five agents, 100 homes, 200 homes, 80 homes. Like, so when I see that, I'm like, well, I missed that boat of all those people they got. That's the way I look at it. If they're getting it, you're not getting it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why I'm just like, I don't even want to go into Orlando anymore because my business is picking up so much here. So I'm like, I'm going to call someone. Hey, do you want to show this house for me? Because I'm so busy here that I don't need to go over there. I'm like, I'm selling right where I live. And don't judge me for Haines City Deep because I know you're about to say something. So leave me alone. But guys, like you right now is the time to just take your market share, love on your people, and you will see like stop looking for the instant gratification. It's not going to come there. You have to fish for it. You have to fish for your people, love on them, and the business will come. Awesome. Thank you, Liz. So Claire, I'd love for you to come. Let's help everybody out. So those of us who maybe, because this all started with, we got to double down on the lead gen and stuff, right? So Claire, I know you're running a group coaching and stuff, doing a fantastic job. And I'd just love to hear a little bit from you as far as whatever system or strategies you guys have laid out um, to stay consistent with the lead gen that, that you guys are doing. So thanks, Curtis, for the opportunity. And we have quite a few of the group coaching clients on this call today. And where they have seen the most benefit is their mindset, to be perfectly honest, that three-legged stool and where they are able to serve. We do real play on our calls as well. I will say that this week we had some technical difficulties. However, we got through that very easily. And what's so cool is as a group, they chose instead of how many calls that they were going to make, they were chasing their nose. So we're in this mode that whatever the group needs as a whole is where we are going. And 
So at first they were chasing a hundred nodes and they were filling their pipeline. So then they realized they couldn't attain the hundred nodes. So we dropped it to 50 nodes. They're still filling their pipelines because it was about the mindset. It was about just having that conversation in the sense of what Coach Debbie said earlier. If you're in a line, if you're somewhere, let me just tell each and every one of you on this call, you are an expert in real estate. I don't care if you're one day in the business, one day license. What makes you an expert? You have a license. You care about people and you care about your new career. You care about your new business. Just care for people. I talk about it all the time, y'all. Send out care calls. Everyone is stressed about something. However, we are the honey that pours on their stress to relieve it and make it a little sweeter. And so we'll go through some of those conversations when we're on our call. We're staying accountable. Here's what's important about group coaching that most people don't understand. Usually group coaching costs about 250 bucks a month. However, you have an opportunity because you're a part of our group that we deliver this at a very affordable rate. Okay. You're staying accountable to your wins. You're staying accountable to your role play. You're staying accountable to what is actually going on in your business. It's real time, not play time. This is not training. Okay. At all. None whatsoever. Okay. Because there's a difference between coaching and training. I would be perfectly honest. All right. And those of y'all that can understand that is when you're when you are going to the gym and you're training, you know, that's great. However, when you hire a personal trainer, that personal trainer is geared to what you want in your goals and personal training. There's a difference between training and coaching. So I just encourage all of you that are on this call. <clears throat> If you want to share some of your wins from being a part of that group, share with the group because this is an awesome opportunity for us to make sure that when we're looking left to right and and Debbie, I kind of heard that 30% of the agents in, in our area are going to be gone. So that means I don't want anybody on this call to not be here to where you have to make that decision to get yourself a stupid job. When all you do in real estate, you only have five jobs. And here's the five jobs. Lead generate, lead follow-up, set appointments, negotiate contracts, re real, real play or script and role play. You get that in your group coaching and your peer group. Y'all are leading. Y'all are not falling behind. Y'all are staying on task. And I'm so proud of all the clients that we're able to serve because us as coaches, as Coach Curtis, Coach Debbie, and I, we have one-on-one -on -one coach, coaching clients. We have group coaching that we do. And it is phenomenal to see y'all succeed because that's our goal. It's not about us. It's about your goals. And that's what's first and foremost. So let's hear from the group. Hey, Coach, hey, I'll just jump in there real quick. Sorry, I can't have my camera on at the moment. Yes, absolutely. Um, I definitely see value in, in coaching. And I'll share this with the group who don't know. You know, I come from a background, I'm talking about decades of expert salesmen. I've taught sales. I've coached for 15 years. Uh, I'm talking about coming into this world. I personally said I can coach myself. And I found out real quick in about a month and a half into it, yeah, there's a value, there's value in the coach. So the program that Coach Clear, Mama Clear is talking about, definitely. So some of the wins I've seen, um, tracking for one, I'm I'm very analytical. I'm that beaver. And the KDNA, I value stuff like that, hold you accountable. Sorry, coach. I'll update this week. Today, I get that updated. I got it on my list of things to do. All right. The one thing I know that a coach can't do is can't give you drive. That's internal. You have to have the drive. But the resources are there for you to help you stay focused and go for yours. All right, that's it. Thanks. Thanks, Jamal. Go ahead, Desiree. I just wanted to say that um, I reached out to someone two months ago when I was new for advice, and I went to their open house to shadow them. And um, 
they, they were giving me advice and stuff like that, but I still felt kind of lost. Well, I had a turnaround moment and they called me yesterday reaching out and they were like, look, I feel really bad. I'm in the slumps Two of my deals fell through. And I, like Liz just said, I feel like I had like an inner Tom in my head. And I was like, well, if you had eight more deals on the table, you wouldn't have cared if those two deals fell through. And, um, and I was like, why do you feel bad today? And then I felt like Claire was in my head and I was like, have you done your five jobs today? And he was like, well, what are those? And I was like, telling him what his five jobs were. You need to lead generate. You need to follow up. Have you done scripts and role play? Like I'm telling him this guy's been in the business for 11 years. And, um, he was just blown away. And he was like, where is all of this coming from? It's like, you've had a complete change. And I was like, I hired a coach and it was just like, boom, like, I don't know, mic drop. Like just, I wanted to say thank you. Cause like you poured into me and this group pours into me and I was able to completely take this guy out of his funk, make him start laughing. He was having a terrible day. We, I even started doing script and role play with him on the phone. So I told him, there you go. You're already turning it around, doing your job. And um, just want to say thank you. It is a pleasure, Desiree. And this is what's so funny. If y'all think about this really quick and what Coach Debbie had said, you know, about a job. If you were to work for yourself, if you were to hire yourself to do the job that it takes to do whatever production that you're working for, can you truthfully look at yourself and say, yes, I've done my job today? Could you really look at yourself in the mirror or look at your significant other or look at your kids in your face to say, I did my job today? Because that's all we're promised is today. So why aren't we maximizing that? Why aren't we investing in our businesses to make sure that we can look in that mirror each and every day to say, I got my job done. Do you not think that I have a coach? I know for a fact that Curtis and Debbie have coaches. I know Tom Martin has a coach. Coaches need coaches. I have three. It's okay to have a coach to take you to the next level or to get you off your butt to do what you need to do to attain your goals. This isn't about pushing production like normal big box stores. Oh, you need to do this or else we're going to have to let you get. That's it. This is not where we are. Are you on track right now for your 2023 goals? If not, then it may be a time to look at your business strategy and place those things in your business that are going to get you where you need and want to be. That's all I'm saying. Coach Curtis, he just popped off. No, he didn't. So go to the bar and talk to people. <laughs> go yeah, ahead, Debbie. Okay. <laughs> Listen, so so you know, we do love it. We're right up at our um, you know, 929. You know, the the reason we have this group is because we're all committed to helping each other get better, right? And every single person on this call is committed to helping other people or we wouldn't be showing up. So reach out to a peer if you're struggling with any of the things that we're talking about. Um, forming a three-legged stool, you know, reach out to Claire if you're looking to get some accountability. Um, you know, if you're struggling with conversations to a specific segment of the population, reach out and get, these are skills that we can all learn, right? Wherever you are right now, you can take purposeful action and get better. Um, and you don't have to wait till you get better to start taking action. You could knock on a door and say, hi, do you want to buy or sell or invest in real estate? Because I'm a real estate agent committed to helping people. You can have an imperfect conversation and still get results. You just probably have to knock on more doors. Then, then if you got good at the conversation, but here's the thing. I, I saw this, I think Mel Robbins said the other day, we all want to get, have confidence to move forward. But what gives us confidence is moving forward. The action builds the confidence. Waiting to have confidence before you start just won't happen. 
we gain confidence as we take action. So if you want to get confident, start today. Have conversations today. Be willing to do it mediocrely, and then you will get better. So we build our confidence by taking action, not before we take action. We build our motivation by taking action. If you've not made five conversations in a day consistently, and you tell yourself today, I'm going to have five. When you have five, you're going to feel like Superman or Supergirl or Superperson. You're going to feel amazing that you did it. You had a goal. You, you did it. Whether it was awkward and uncomfortable, you're going to feel great. And then that's going to motivate you to do it again. Right? So it's the action that builds the confidence and the action that builds the motivation. I'm never going to feel like it. I heard Gary Vaynerchuk yesterday in a, he was speaking to mortgage brokers saying, I hate the gym. I've always hated the gym. I've never liked the gym. But about 10 years ago, I realized that that is not productive for my well-being. So I hired a coach. And you know what? I still hate the gym every single day. But I got somebody beating my butt every day to go do it. I still hate it. I hate it, but I'm doing it. You don't have to like it. You just have to do it. Yeah, so Desiree talks about filling out the accountability sheet that, that she has in the group coaching. Um, Ruth, sorry about that. Lost a client for not, fill, not following up. It, it is a wake-up call. And, it, and if you struggle with follow-up, the number one thing you can do is open your CRM in the morning and add every single person manually that you talk to that day and set a follow-up reminder date and call. And then every morning, open up your tasks and see who you need to call today. And then you won't miss out on. Great. Good job, Ruth. Good job. Thank you all. We're over two minutes. It is the after party. Woo! Where's our music?